Sex Smooth FM. It is I. Daddy Boy Rob. <laughs> and I'm about to give you some gnarly tips on sex, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, lovely. Good start. Welcome to the Sideline Podcast. I'm definitely keeping that in. No. Here. Yep. No. Uh, no, no, it's Jack no. here. No, don't. And uh, I'm here, as, as I am every week, with... Uh, K Dog and Rob, how are we guys? Yeah, good. How are you? Pretty good, thank uh, you. K Dog, what was going on with your uh, opening monologue there, mate? About the the radio thing, mate. That was <laughs> what you're talking about. Um, I know what you're talking about. Tom's not here this week because he spent too long rolling around in the mud at Strawberry Fields and he got a cold. Contracted AIDS. Yep. Okay. So it's just us three, as it was last week, actually. Nice. No, was it oh, last yes, episode? It was, yeah. No, oh, no, because no, we didn't no, upload no, that one. No. Yeah, no. Because yeah. that, was, that was a write-off because of your antics. Not much happened anyway that week. Not because of my antics. No. <laughs> because of someone else's antics. And his name's Carl Malone. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll talk about that another no. time, Rob. Uh, no way. Right, let's get let's get stuck Start. in. It's been a... Uh, not not too packed week. Well, it's week. been more packed than last week, mate. More packed that than last week, for sure. sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so we had the AFL draft. Which is big, yeah. Went over well, two days. Big. Thursday night and Friday. It, it was uh, considered a big Two day. days too long. I like the new format. I like how you have the sort of the first round draft picks at night and then the lesser ones during the day. Just yeah. a bit long. Yeah. Just didn't really yeah. need to go for that long, well, I don't think. Now you know how NFL fans feel. Where the NFL draft goes for like four or five days. Yeah, no, nah, fuck that. <laughs> so you can imagine how painstaking that'd be for them. Yeah. So, uh... Sam Walsh is pick number one. Going to Carlton. Yep. Yeah. Solid. He's going to be a really solid player in that midfield. Maybe you give him three or four seasons and he could sort of um, help Patrick Tri- Cripps with the workload. Tripsy. Yeah, Patrick Tripps. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, pa- yeah, Patrick Tripps. Far <laughs> 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 uh, But no, it was a good pickup. but I still think that Jack Lukosius was the best player in that, that draft. And but why do you think that? Just he's, he mirrors the sort of an Eric Hipwood, Lance Franklin type player. Like he's got the build of Hipwood, but he's also got the explosiveness of a um, but of a Buddy Franklin. You give him a couple of years, and you sort of help him develop and put more muscle on, and he's going to be and a really scary sort of prospect for defenders. Yeah, yeah, and that's why he went to Gold Coast. If I'm right, yeah, he did. Gold, yeah, Gold yeah, Coast, and he replaces that Tom Lynch type player. Yeah, but that's going to be that's big shoes yeah. to fill. Maybe Ben King as well, because he's a swing man. You, he could be playing in the forward line as well. Key positions um, are always harder to get. They reckon he's going to replace um, Stephen... Ben King? No, yeah. What's his name? Stephen, Stephen May. Stephen, Stephen May. May, yeah. Stephen, <laughs> Stephen, so got, yeah. Stephen King. I've got, I've got a bit of a... <laughs> Stephen He's Mill. fucking right at the novels, mate. Yeah. <laughs> I said Stephen May. He said Stephen King. I said Stephen May. <laughs> you said Stephen May after you said Stephen King. Yeah, okay, whatever. <laughs> right, yeah, I've, got a, I've got a little riddle for you guys. Oh, here in we go. To Gold Coast. So Gold Coast have three top ten picks. They've got... Jack Lukosius at two, Isaac Rankin at three, and Ben King at six. How long do we reckon it will take until all three players end up going back to their home state? Because let's be frank here. Where are they despite, from? So Lukosius and Rankin are South, South, South Australia boys, and Ben King's a Melbourne boy. But the thing is, yeah, despite the fact, yeah, great, it's an AFL club, but like, Gold Coast don't have anything going for them right no. now. And, um, um, yeah. What's his name? Is it Ben King? Yeah, pretty he, sure he said he's he's keen on playing for Gold Coast and he's like trying to like he, he wants to make yeah, but that's the they're always going to say that yeah, that's but what you like, expect them to say. Yeah. Like, I'm sure the likes Gary Abbott said that too. Jake Lever, <laughs> Jake Lever probably said that when he got drafted by Adelaide and look yeah. where he is now. That's fair. Um, Dane Beams did a massive back. Yeah, but I think I don't. I think 90 percent of the time when they say they want to go home, it's not because they want to go home; it's because they want to get out, and yeah. they just use it as an especially, excuse. Yeah. And especially the fact it's Gold Coast just don't have anything going for them. They they. No. Like I understand with like when it was like Hogan's, like with his dad and stuff, how uh, he passed away, Fair and enough. then Dane Beams and all that sort of stuff, because he wanted to be with his brother. Well, but now Beams is going home because he wants to be with his because his mum lives down in Melbourne. So yeah, yeah, that's that's the sort of stuff I understand. But when it's just like, 
oh, I just want to go home like Marcus Adams. That's just not true. Mm-hmm. He just wants to let's go. Be, he wants to move to fucking West Coast. To... I thought Marcus Adams went to Brisbane. He did in the end, which is which is funny because he said oh, that he wanted to go. Yeah. That's oh, what I'm okay. trying to say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, my bad. Okay. He's from Western Australia, and he oh. said, "Oh, I want to go home," but then he ended up going to. This, Brisbane. That's the problem these days. So many young players are wanting to opt out of these contracts with, or when their contract finishes, they they want to go home because they're homesick. I mean, toughen up. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. I don't think it's homesickness. I no. think it's just an excuse to move. Yeah. Oh well. Um, yeah. Bailey Williams, good pickup. Did you guys see the Nuffies thing with Bailey Williams with the the doggy supporter? He was like, "Oh, this is a bit rich from West Coast," and then everyone was like, "What do you mean?" He's like, "It's a bit rude drafting someone with the same name as our player," <laughs> and he was like, actually pissed off. Um, <laughs> he's fucking no, I, my God, is he? What do you reckon about him? Is he good? Good pickup, very good pickup. Yeah, Bailey Williams for West Coast. No, for you guys, the, the dogs, Smith. Bailey Smith. Oh, I'm off to <laughs> Williams. Oh, I'm off Mal to Mal dog. But there is a Bailey Williams who got drafted. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was, that's why I put in. No. Um, yeah, I, that's why I was like, you're asking me. I, I have no idea shot. about Sorry, it. Sorry, Bailey Smith. But you know, Bailey Smith, Bailey Smith was the um, big Metro MVP. Yeah. No, so the, I think going seven is actually pretty low for the big great, Metro MVP. He's a great player. And, um, you know, he's... The you, other teams you, must have been a lot better. <laughs> the thing the thing is, you're going to get a very dedicated player. He, you know, he plans his own weekly meals and... No, he's always spending time, whether it's in the gym or on the field, practicing his game. And um, with you know, Xavier, though, not so sure about that. Yeah, Pretty sure he did say he didn't want to leave Victoria. He's well, also so he's never, the yeah, he's also yeah. never touched the drop of alcohol, which I thought at first really, thought, which at th- at first I thought it was hard to believe. But then you sort of look into it and you hit, see all these clippings and articles of just how you know how dedicated he is to you know playing footy and how much he loves the game. So good on him. Yeah, being added to a very you know stacked midfield already. Yeah. Should be good. Um, yeah, well. Ed Richards will probably move into the defence now. My man, Ed. Yeah, my he's going to be a freak. He mm. is. He had a great season. Um, what about Melbourne? Thoughts on the draft for Melbourne, mate? Because they... Uh, we had a few... We only had one low one. Uh, pick 20, 20... You had 20, 26. 26, and 26, then he had one yeah, like 33, 34. So. We, did, we did go for... Because you traded away your future. <laughs> <laughs> we did go for... What was his name? Bailey Scott? Yeah. You know, you guys would have ended up with no, Bailey no, Smith. Ba- no, not Bailey Smith. Um, oh, Riley West. Oh, Riley West. I yeah. know why I said Scott. I th- yeah. Um, yeah. Because his dad's name is Scott West. Scott West, yeah. That's why. Yeah. Well, yeah, we tried to make We were up. never going to let him go for... Yeah, exactly. I don't know why, why we were trying to do that. Yeah, but yeah no, we got a bit of run and carry through the midfield now with some of the guys coming in. Um, what's his name? Sparrow. And a few of the later picks. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's good then. Hmm. Uh, yeah, so speaking of Riley West, three father sons. Jake Kelly. Not uh, Jake Kelly. Not Jake Kelly. It's not Jake Kelly. Is it Jake Kelly? It's Kelly. his brother. Will Kelly. Will Kelly. Will yeah. Kelly, yeah. Will Kelly, yeah. Sorry. Will Kelly was a Scotty West son. Riley. Riley West and. Brownless. Oh, yeah, Brownless, Oscar. Yeah. Oscar, yeah. Yeah. What did Oscar Oh, have? sorry, and Ben Silvani as well. Oh, yes. Yeah, that was the other yes. one. I knew there was Who another went, one. Who went, like, in the 70s or 80s. Did you guys see the. The, the graphics guy for the draft talking about oh, Ben yeah. Silvani or something. The, the I'm not Fox sure if that Sports. was real. I thought that was, yeah. Is that edited? Uh, I don't, I don't I'm know. Not but sure, but what was so it? It was like um, was related to, like it was like three positives. It was like related to Sauce, oh. already better than Ben. Yeah. and uh, No, already better than Jack. Already better than Jack. Yeah, yeah. I think that's going to be a mock. And then something else. He's going to be, I reckon he's better than Jack. Like, I've seen a lot of stuff about how he's a better player. Yeah, that's than, what they were saying, yeah. yeah. He's going to be better. It's not hard to be better than Jack though. He's got Tom, good, Tom would be here to contest that, but he's yeah. not here. Apart so just, from, apart just from imagine his, that someone's yelling at me. He's got good forward line pressure, <laughs> but apart from that, he doesn't really bring much to the table. He can't really kick. He can't. He struggles to kick forty meters. So yeah, I genuinely think the only reason he's in the team is because his last name's Silvani. <laughs> oh, well, well, There's um, a couple of other players like that, Rob, but we won't bring them up, will we? Isaac, Isaac Quainor. Thoughts on Isaac Quainor? Pick thirteen for Collingwood. What do you reckon? Do you reckon that's a good pick? Is he up? defender? Yeah, he, yeah, he can bring a bit of run off the back line for us. So didn't say much of him to no, be honest. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> no, there were some really good pickups um, in, that, in that draft for all the teams. Uh, yeah. Justin, uh, Justin McInerney, uh, very the brother of a very good mate of mine, Chris Mac of McInerney. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the nickname in the middle there, Rob. He's um, yeah, I'm really stoked for him and his family, and I uh, can't wait to see how he goes up in Sydney. So. Uh, Will he be quick, in your super coach? 
Yep. Just so just yeah, <laughs> quick shout out to Justin McInerney. So all the all the best for you know Sydney buddy and you know we'll be cheering you on from Melbourne. So all the best, mate. And if you are actually listening, tell all your Sydney friends to come on the podcast. I should, I'll, should, I, should <laughs> I try and get him on next year? Yeah. When he's down in Melbourne? Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'll not weave, I'll weave my magic on. Obviously, I'll, yeah. I'll try and get him on. We need to get a guest on, so yeah. eventually. I can, bring, I can bring Chris down if we need a replacement too for someone that's away because he's a, he's a sportsman as well. True, but then it's not really a guest. Two it's... for one deal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's not an actual football player. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> but yeah, I meant an about... AFL football player. Ah, yeah. But yeah. Um, Tom we'll Bug. Talking about the rookie, rookie draft? Yeah, rookie draft. Yeah. 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 We'll uh, see how long, yeah. Probably the most standout player there was probably Tom Bug. Standout? Oh, not standout. And you stand out because you're a dickhead. Yeah, recognised. <laughs> Just a king hit. Um, yeah. <laughs> Pig, that's what he is. Good on him for going to Carlton. Yeah. Didn't, didn't want him anyway. Enjoy him. Yeah. yeah. If shit. Tom was here, we could probably talk more about it. But I mean, you know, mm. Carlton, Carlton just get desperate, and they like they like getting all these rejects. Tom's very excited. I wish Tom was on this podcast. There's nothing. He's, there's... he's getting up and about. <laughs> Apart from Sam Walsh, I don't think there's much to get excited about with Carlton. I can only see him being <laughs> a five-six win team next year. Yeah. Okay. Well, better than how many did they win this? I mean, this is two, this three. is getting crazy now. Two. This is the fourth year of Bolton's rebuild, and they're still. Yeah, I understand Sam Doherty was out last season, but two wins. It doesn't change much. It doesn't yeah, it, cha- it maybe doesn't change you into a team that's like... Do you know what will change? Tom Bug. Tom Bug? Mm, yeah, yeah, Tom no. Bug. No. Tom Bug's going to play for fucking Northern Blues. 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 Northern Blues. <laughs> Northern Blues. To be precise, actually. Oh, yeah, they, they changed, changed their name. name. Yeah. I did. You fuck. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's move on to uh, oh, the A-League. Here we go, Rob. So. I'm going to be frank. I did not watch the Melbourne City game. I have lost interest in the A League. Oh, I do remember you talking about. I know we lost two 0 Fornaroli getting out or something. Yes, yeah, so well, there's, there's actually something like Bruno Fornaroli. Apparently, Melbourne City blocked. That's uh, that's that's that. Let's talk about the game first. Okay, okay, okay. okay. So the game first. Was, Joyce leaves out <clears throat> Fornaroli. Doesn't even bring him up, bring him to Brisbane. Just leaves yeah. him in Melbourne. Doesn't even <clears throat> put him on the bench. Our best striker for the last three years, probably one of our yep. best strikers, the the best he striker in our club his, history. He won't be replaced when he leaves, I reckon. Like just what he brings. Mm. So we knew straight away that that wasn't just because he's you know feeling sore, which is what they said initially. But then they asked Joyce why was he left out, and then they said we just picked a team to win the game. Which I'm not, and I'm not sure. Yeah, I think Fornaroli's pissed off because he tried to make a trade, which. And Sydney blocked. To Sydney. And it was and then worth three. It got blocked. It was like three point seven five million. Yeah. Okay, so that before I heard about that, I was pissed off at Joyce and I thought that that was a terrible move, but now that I've heard that Fornaroli actually tried to leave us It's a bit annoying. It's very annoying. Yeah. But you know Oh well, like where's the loyalty? I, I get maybe he doesn't do you reckon like it's, Joyce. Yeah. Do you reckon he's frustrated as well because he got stripped of the captaincy? He can't speak English. Yes, he can. He, no, he can't. He can speak a little bit. He he, he called Optus Octopus. <laughs> yeah, but that was like... <laughs> he, can't, he can't speak English, mate. He can't be the captain of an English football team Australian, if he can't speak English. Australian football team. Okay, sorry. <laughs> sorry, Rob. Australian. Australian football team that speaks English if you can't say Optus. <laughs> Anyway, Octopus. he's just fucking, it just doesn't, yeah. You can't be, you, you just can't be the captain. Anyway, I think Jamison's a good captain. Jamison's a great but leader. If he's pissed off about that, that's, the, that's, that's more petty than Cahill, who I lost <laughs> all respect for last year. Just wanted to all respect for. Lunge at money. He wants more money. That's fair enough. Well, he said With that he was because he wanted to <clears throat> play in the World Cup, moved clubs, didn't get any minutes, he, he and then Mil- didn't play he, in the World played, Cup. He played so Mil- f- he played Millwall reserves the whole time. Exactly. That's now he's like, where do you think you're going to get more time, Millwall or Melbourne City? Melbourne City. Exactly. And then if Joy, and then and then while he's there, like he was saying, he was saying like, oh, that we weren't he, we weren't playing him, whatever. But if he's not there, he's not going to get played anyway. And like, if if Joyce doesn't play him, we start losing games. That's on Joyce. It and is. then maybe he might get fired by the end of the year, and that'd be fucking great because he's terrible. Oh, I don't rate him. Who's worse, Val Canis or Joyce? I think I've asked this before, but. Let's bring this up. Who, Val- who was in Valcanis team? Valcanis' team was Moy. Uh, no, it was 
it was, it was the year, year after it was year after it was when we, we so lost 3-1 in the final in Perth that's the time Bratton no yeah Fornaroli Bratton Camille. Brandon Camille, Camille those, Brandon those did guys. his knee didn't he that season though remember yeah he played the start yeah that was a, um, that was a shocking team the only reason we won games was because of Fornaroli and Brandon hmm. essentially and we, Bratton we, killed we as well shocking. and so did kill Kenny until he got traded which was a ridiculous move yeah what did he Anyway, Joyce just doesn't know how to work with people. He's just terrible. He's got poor social skills, I reckon. Like, yeah, I just think he's a bad coach. I mean, he's, why would you get? Why would you get on the bad side of your work, of your best player? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to take a stab in the dark here, but I've always heard these things about you know coaches in various sports and how they 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 just can't get their message across to the players. They're too scared to give criticism to players directly behind their backs, so though they're you know criticizing how they play to other players or staff and that's I feel that may be what you know Ryan Joyce is like a man that yeah. can't doesn't have the balls to say it how it is to you've the got to find face. a middle ground you've got to be able to tell a player when they're doing something wrong to yeah. their face but also you can't you know you need to be straight you, up with them if they're you've got to be straight up but you've also you can't be a like I had a, a coach that used to this was in under like 15 as well so this is 10 times worse when you're a 14 year old <laughs> Used to swear at me and you know yeah, we, call me a cunt and stuff like that. The last yeah, the last season you got to find a middle ground. The last season of Colts, we had a coach that was pretty upfront, but I really liked him because he was honest and he was straight up with us. Yeah, I had a coach that was upfront when I was doing something wrong and then telling me how to make it better. That's what you want. You don't want a coach that goes, "Fuck you, you're shit," and then doesn't <laughs> tell you what's wrong. You want a coach that's passionate. You want a coach that's gonna bring everything to that. You want someone that. You know the top person that's going to live and breathe the sport, and mm. you know the only the only thing in mind is to win, not just you know to f- you know just solely focus on you know yeah. de- the development of the younger players. That's great. I think mean, that's great. Focusing on the development of the younger players is great, but if you spend too much time focusing on that, you forget about the clear picture. You've got to you've got to have a personality. It's co- it comes down to the trust between the player and the coach because the player obviously they're at that high level where they should be able to do whatever the coach says yeah and the coach should be able to tell them and so the player has to Vince. trust the coach that the co- what the coach is saying to do like yeah is the right thing the thing, the, the thing why Warren jo- Joyce is I oh, don't rain he, he didn't he didn't have much playing experience too yeah well you yeah. just got if you look at if you look at the best coaches in any sport around the world all yep. of them have you know a certain not not necessarily an outgoing personality but some sort of personality yeah, you look at Warren Joyce He's the most boring fucking batshit <laughs> po- like coach ever. You can see it in his play style. You can see it in the way he stands on the touchline. You he can wears see it shorts. in the, what he fucking he wears. He wears shorts. He's from England and he wears He's shorts. He's wearing shorts. In 16 Mate, degree. tell me what manager's going to wear shorts on the touchline. Yeah, he just, he's just yeah, boring as shit. You'll get someone that wears shorts. We, sh- we, noticed, we noticed he wore shorts from the first week. We should have yeah. fired him then. <laughs> that was when we should have gone, nah, you wear shorts. You're clearly a fucking terrible manager. Anyway, yeah. I th- we were going to talk about the big blue. We'll go over it for like two seconds because not- none of us watched Honda, it. Honda because... penalty put them 2-1 up. There was the uh, VR, uh, VAR controversy. Again, more the, VAR controversy. The beauty. Every week. Oh, you got to love VAR, don't you? Yeah. Uh, well, I had this I think argument. We've all, we've all really lost. Well, I've had this argument with Tom about VAR. He's a big fan of VAR, but I'm not. I'm well, not a fan of it. I think Tom, Tom, Tom is a fan of getting the call right. <laughs> You, this is the, the but VAR is different. VAR is not necessarily always getting the call re- right. Referees get paid so much to make these decisions, so yeah. why not rely on them? They're the ones that get trained. That you know. They're yeah, but then you can get the wrong study. Call. Yeah, you they, you don't expect. But they it, shouldn't be expected to make these calls. Stay as it stands. If the referee makes the bad call, then that's that shouldn't be on him. It just shows like the training or maybe like how they brought up. They should have yeah. more training. Like, study, like, VAR uh, should be there oh, to aid the well, I mean, referees. The problem is. In a sport like soccer, one moment and one decision can Could change the, change game. the yeah, whole game. Exactly. Remember Frank Lampard's In goal? basketball, maybe, maybe not. Yeah. One call, yeah. they review it, it's wrong, whatever, move yeah. on, it's two points. Same That's, goes... Yeah. doesn't mean shit. Same goes with footy, same goes with so many other sports. Like, yeah. Soccer, if you get a penalty, the other team scores, it could be 1-0 for the rest of the game, yeah. and then that's the end. That's yeah. why VAR, I think, is important, but it needs to be fixed. Well, maybe, we talked about this last week anyway. Do you think yeah. the VAR in Australia, they're paying too much, maybe, time or attention No, because it? they need to iron it out. It needs to be Compared tested. It can't to... be... They can't... You know, they can't run the VAR and just 
go, okay, this is going to work. It has to be tested. Mm. Like, there's going to, like, I'm sure the first, the first five, well, the first two seasons of soccer when referees barely knew the fucking rules, there was terrible calls made left, right, and center. You know, you just got to, you sort of just got to wait it out and iron yeah. out the shit that's wrong. And then eventually, I think it'll be a good thing. The only so. good thing that's been implemented, I reckon, so far and techno- uh, technologically has been the goal on technology. That's been a big success. Yeah, obviously, that's, that's, that's black mm. and white, though. That's, like, that's, that's uh, exactly what you need. And then now the VAR. That can't be wrong. Just, you just look at that. It's, uh, is it over the line? Is it not? The VAR Done. at the moment, how I see it, is like a puppy that's being trained but does not obey his owners. Yeah. That's, that's the way, that is my way of seeing it. Yeah. All right. Uh, so the first, the first team in Europe, out of there's about five or six teams in Europe that haven't dropped any points yet. Oh well, no, drop, they've dropped points, but they Chelsea, haven't dropped. They haven't, they haven't lost. Chelsea. Chelsea are the first team to do that now. Three one to Spurs from the derby. Spurs. Uh, yeah, it was terrible from Chelsea, really. Well, they were two two nil down. Two nil down at half time, mm. thanks to goals from Deli Ali and Kane, and then. I think Kepa should have saved that Deli Ali goal. I reckon you should have saved most of them. And <laughs> what about what? Have, and David Luiz just player, David Luiz just 80, eighty million or whatever they paid for him. What did they pay for him? Eighty million. Seventy four, but it got up to eighty. Seventy five million pounds. Pounds, but then yeah, they'll so go up. So that's that like a hundred and ten but then after, million dollars. After yeah. his first year in his contract, they'll go up to eighty. It's ridiculous. So. He's not even that good. He's not even the give best him, keeper in the league, let alone yeah, the but world. Give him, give him. You got to give him time. He's off. What? I know you got to give him time, but seriously, when you if you pay that much money. For a goalkeeper, you have to expect some results. That Harry Kane goal should have never gone in. And nah. what's his name? David standing Luiz. In front. De- yeah, he, David Luiz is terrible as well. He dodged the ball. The fans, yeah. fans, David, fans, David fans. Luiz have been has been so bad for the past two years. This since was, he's come back from PSG. This was the breaking point for Chelsea fans. This performance from David Luiz because fan, Chelsea fans and pundits are all over him. After well, that. if you want to, you should have heard Fraser talking about it. We should get him in here, buddy. Hell. Um, oh well, I mean. <laughs> I think I think Spurs should have had at least another two or so goals. Yeah. I think it should have been five one six one. I think it was a d- Can't generous. Can't fault Spurs. They just did what they yeah, did. They are, they got but now they the now they jump over Chelsea into third place. So yeah. Um, well, you know, I I always thought Chelsea were going to drop points first. I knew they weren't going to be up there for the whole time. It just shows as well how good Spurs are as a, maybe a top four team. They didn't spend any money on players, and they're still yeah because Pochettino's. Uh, very confident with the team yeah. he has, and he has been for a long time. Oh, he's it annoys the Spurs fans, but, yeah, but I don't. I, it wouldn't annoy me. He, he. I reckon he will go to Real Madrid at the end of this season. Yeah. Like I'm with with Liverpool's team right now. If we kept this team and developed Gomez, Alexander Arnold, you see his free. How about that free kick he scored against? Yeah, Watford? Alexander Arnold. Yeah, was good. good yeah, goal. he's such a good free kick taker. Um, but yeah, if we just develop those players and then keep the rest of the team the same, we can we can we can challenge every single year. I reckon, I reckon we should try and swap Mourinho for Pochettino. That'd be funny. Yeah, well, I don't think Pochettino wants to go because he's put so much groundwork in. Mm. Well, there are, I see so much about Real Madrid wanting Pochettino. The problem is Spurs need to take that final, that next step eventually. Yeah. They can't keep doing the same thing every year. Top Applying four, pressure, nothing putting happens. Pressure on the top, top four, nothing thing. happens, you know. I mean, the Champions League then got knocked out first round in the group stage last year. No, they lost to you. They were made. Oh, no, they, they lost to you. They lost in the first round of the, group, of the knockout. The yeah. thing is, though, the season Chelsea won the league, Chelsea finished with 94, 95 points. Spurs finished with 89. 89 is a pretty good. Yeah, and that's the thing, but it doesn't mean anything. Exactly. But, you know, if you. They've got to take the next yeah, step. I reckon, yeah. Oh, well, they've, they've got a bit of. They've still got a bit of working work yeah. to do. Uh, speaking of the Champions League, we've got a lot of. Um, we've got a lot of. A lot of uh, games this week. So we've got Liverpool PSG, which is one of the biggest ones. Uh, big news coming out of the international break, which was mm. Neymar and Mbappe both getting injured. Yeah. Neymar has Within a, the first 20 minutes, I think. Both Neymar, Neymar had a right adductor strain, and he was taken off after the, the first eight minutes in the yeah. friendly against Cameroon. And Mbappe, Mbappe was in the challenge. Mbappe got a tackle and sort of looked like he dived a bit and ended up landing I mean, yeah. awkwardly on his right shoulder, and now it's bruised. So, yeah. so we, we're not sure if they're 100% out yet. But if they are out, how will that's they, huh? huge for Liverpool. And how will they fare without these two on come? Well, I don't, I think if Neymar and Mbappe are out, that's a win it's, for Liverpool. It's a crucial game because I thought it was already <coughs> quite close. Because I don't think I, I I think PSG are very good, but I don't think they're that yeah. good. Like if you saw the game last time we played them, 
They struggled against Napoli as well at home. They struggled against Napoli and they and we beat them. Yeah, oh no, we drew, didn't we? It's the jo- it's the Jordan tops. Yeah. They well, need to stop wearing those. It's too flamboyant and they're struggling. Yeah. But yeah, no. Yeah. It's, so it's a crucial game because if I think if PSG lose and Liverpool win, they're out, and that's that's if Napoli beat Red Star at and home, which they beat, will. We have to play will. Napoli again, don't we? There's still one more round after this, right? Yeah, you got Napoli at home in the final fixture yeah. of the Champions League. So, we can lose to PSG tonight, I think. But then we have to beat Napoli by three goals or something like that. It's doable. It's doable, but I think Napoli is probably the strongest team. Or, mm, yeah. Well, they look good under Angel. I don't know how we lost to Red Star, but anyway. That was funny. I had a good laugh at that. <laughs> All right, uh, moving on to the NBA. My, my best mate. <laughs> well, we'll talk about him later, but Jimmy Butler. My best mate, Jimmy Butler, hit another game winner, Jeez. and he dropped what thirty four. Yeah. I was 20, twelve rebounds. I was talking to a guy about this today in regards. We're talking about the contenders in the East, and we we're talking about you know Toronto, Milwaukee, maybe even Boston if they pick themselves up. But we completely forgot about Philly. Philly have gone from probably a team that can contend to make it to the Eastern Conference Finals to now maybe even a dark horse to make the finals with Jimmy Butler and their team because they've gone five and zero with him, pretty sure five and one. Well, they've only lost one game at home. They've got and four that was and for one, somehow to the Cavs, wasn't it? Yeah, it was because Kendall Jenner was watching Ben. <laughs> oh yeah, true, very um, true. But yeah, no, they they're a serious threat now. Yeah, they are looking very good. <laughs> uh, something else to come out of the NBA that I didn't necessarily want to talk about because I didn't think it was very important. Yeah, this is a bit awkward to talk <laughs> but about. But we will talk about it because it was huge. It's making the rounds over in the US. Yeah, well, here, here as, well, as well, just on Twitter. <laughs> um, I thought it was fake news, but no, no it's real. It yeah, we're not 100% sure if it's real or you not. you got to go on, you got to go on. Yeah, I've, it is, I think it is. Because there's also recordings of her talking to Dwight over the phone. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, well, I'll send that. that. Yeah, I'll send, have to send that into you guys later on. Yeah. Well, so Dwight Howard, I'm not exactly sure. It's basically, Dwight Howard's been accused by a transsexual. I'm not going to say anything derogatory on air, but a transsexual of it's not a political having podcast, sexual, Rob. of having <laughs> sexual relations with her and potentially seeing her for a length, lengthy period of time. So he fucked and dated tranny. Now this yeah. comes, I think, basically. So, <laughs> basically, it's all come to a head. Something's happened with her. Um, someone in Dwight Howard's party has, um, or entourage has threatened her or something, and now she's not happy, and she's made it public on Twitter. So, yeah. I sort of feel bad for Dwight. Obviously, like, just this sort of stuff. Like, you just imagine being... It just doesn't... It, like, it just doesn't... It's not important. Yeah. No, it like, need to be. if he... Yeah. If he's Let him be. into that... Then let him be. You know, it's a bit odd. One of the our thing, but it's, it's just pretty personal yeah. and like it's like, yeah. it's like his, yeah. if it's his thing, let him do what he wants to do. He's a millionaire; he can do whatever the hell he likes. Like he hasn't done anything illegal. But this is the thing, though. The, the entourage member might have done something. Professional. Illegal. Yeah. Apparently, it was they sent death threats. Yeah, so that's so that's, that's this, this is how they've so, done something wrong. But if it, well, if he asked them to professional, do that, professional then. athletes are going to get screwed get screwed on so bad for any little thing they do. This is just. Uh, prime example of it. If this happened maybe to, I don't know, Joe from down the road. Joe from down the road gets ca- called out by a transsexual. I don't think Joe from down the road would be very happy with you outing him on our podcast. Right? <laughs> well, Joe from down the road gets called out by a transsexual. <laughs> no one's going to bat an eyelid. Maybe his family, if he's got a family, but apart from that, no one. Dwight Howard gets called out for this and the whole world is talking about it. That is just how scrutinised professional athletes are. Mm, yeah, I saw, yeah. A, I saw a tweet that said, don't do we think that maybe the reason Dwight Howard kept this all a secret is because of all this shit you're giving him right now? Yeah. And it's just, it's just so true. Like, yeah, it is. <laughs> exactly. why, would he, why would he talk about it if this is what was going to yeah, happen? This is the whiplash. Of, yeah. Yeah, so... And he, he hasn't even come out and made a statement yet, has he? And so he shouldn't. No. This is so exactly, embarrassing yeah. for him. Like, he's lost <laughs> his face. Have they played yet? Uh, they, they, today, they, um, they beat Houston. And he played? Actually, no, I think he I don't want to watch what the crowd out. did. I think he started it. Oh, he might have started it. Yeah. Ironically, I feel like he, he wouldn't had have played. A, something, something to do with his ass. An ass <laughs> yeah, oh, something. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure. No, I'm being serious. Oh, <laughs> sure. Shut up. No. An ass injury. I'll look up Dwight Howard's injury right now. All right. Okay. 
I'm being serious. That's <laughs> why does it say anti rim protector? <laughs> Be, because he's uh, one of the best rim protectors of all time on <laughs> okay. the field. Yeah, okay. off the field. Dwight Wizards Dwight Howard <laughs> sidelined so with lingering glute injury. Oh, wow, he does actually oh, have an ass yeah. injury. Yes, I'll read it out. Washington Wizards centre Dwight Howard is sitting out tonight's game against the Los Angeles Clippers because of a gluteal injury. Wow. That's hilarious. Yeah. That didn't even... Wow. <laughs> right. <laughs> I thought you were taking the piss out of No, right? I wasn't. It's, I'm being dead serious. Why would, he, why would he make that up then? Because that's just even more embarrassing, the fact that he's got an arse injury. <laughs> maybe, maybe like, he's did something the else. Maybe he's taking yeah, the maybe, piss. Yeah, maybe mm-hmm. he's, you know, with it and he just doesn't care, so he's just... Oh, just take the piss and say I've got an anal injury. Said on the article <laughs> that is what the Wizards' head athletic trainer said. Right. So. Yeah, but the the head athletic trainer can lie too. I mean, for him, it's doubtful. <laughs> like they're gonna they're gonna say it how it is. Yeah. They have they have to. They're not gonna say they're not gonna assess a player who's got an ACL and say oh, don't mate, you just got a dislocated kneecap. It doesn't work like that. I mean, yeah. Yeah, no, but it doesn't matter what they say to him. It matters what they say yeah, to the exactly, fucking people. Because yeah. oh, well, yeah. they could say to him, you're fine, and then yeah. they go, oh, he's got an ass injury. Well, I guess in the moral of the story, don't be a dingbat. Yeah, don't be a dingbat. <laughs> That's right, Rob. That's going to be on a T-shirt. All oh, right. <clears throat> that, was, uh, that was it for the last two weeks. Um, we'll probably, we're trying to get one out every week, but we've been struggling last week. It was just lack of content it was just stupidity not really it was yeah, yeah it was just lack of content i think we got a bit silly. out of hand yeah we got, yeah, we we got a bit we had a bit of, bit of silly time here and there we might podcast. upload it further down the track if you yeah want maybe to, to it but maybe yeah, it's pretty pretty shit uh, maybe anyway uh make sure you like the video share it around that'd be very very helpful subscribe. uh like the new facebook page that's just gone up southern podcast as everything else is uh check out the new website that's just been finalised. Stay tuned. Much. Stay tuned for the beanies as well. Yeah, beanies coming soon. Uh, so you can buy those, um, or you can go on Patreon and get one. You s- okay. get one through. I'm not a beanie wearer, there. so I'll just be giving one to K Dog. Never been a dude <laughs> that wears beanies. K Dog's going to get his own anyway, so oh, he, I'm sure he doesn't need your charity, mate. The more, the merrier. <laughs> True. All right. Uh, see you next Au week. Au revoir. Back on.